I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about, about smart, smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. And uh, today's guest is an American stand-up comedian, actor, and writer. <laughs> He's best known for his work on SNL, where he serves as co-anchor on Weekend Update and co-head writer alongside Colin Joss. He also co-hosted the 70th Primetime Emmy Awards in 2018. He was briefly a correspondent for The Daily Show with Jon Stewart and has previously worked on a writer for Saturday Night Live. I think I already said that. At the end of September 2014, he became a weekend update co-anchor for the 40th season of SNL alongside Colin Jost, <laughs> replacing Cicely Strong. I think I pronounced her name right. Did Michael J. <laughs> hey! 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 The full oh. bio. Oh, that's the better one. Oh, no, that's the same one I just read. Yeah, that's good. You got it, man. Shout they out to Cicely. They didn't have none of his old uh, endorsements like most people's bios do. I know. That's, that's actually... Probably recent, man, because I've had some awful, awful, awful ones. Bios? Yeah. Okay. Just shit that's like, I don't even know what. Like, Bring that mic a little closer. Put the mic a little closer to your lips. Pause. Oh, my bad. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, <laughs> Michael, I'm going to tell you something, man. I really, 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 really slept on your TV show. Yo, word. Y'all, thank I you for really, doing it, by the way. I, and by slept on it, I, I didn't see it until yeah, it was yeah. two weeks ago. I watched it two weeks ago during, uh, what was it, Memorial Weekend? Yeah. And I watched and you binged it. I binged it because, you know, the episodes are quick. They're like 19 minutes, yeah, 20 minutes. Yeah. I watched the whole seasons and I'm like, yo, this shit is really, really dope. I uh, appreciate you, man. Yo, for real, thank you for, for coming. You too, Andrew. For sure, I really, man. I really appreciate that. Thank man. you for having it was, me. It was fun. It was like, uh, you know, it felt like the seller to me. Like, that's like what the writer's room was. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. just a bunch of comedians kind of just talking shit, arguing, arguing, arguing. Yes. And then, yo, write that up. That could be funny. Yeah. And then they work, work together and we just got it done. No, that scene was dope because it's like, uh, I, I didn't know Amy Schumer and Method Man would be in the scene. <laughs> 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 you know? Now you got everybody out. That was impressive, man. <laughs> that was silly. It was stupid. My favorite episode, uh, I'm not going to say favorite, but one of my favorites because I liked a lot of them was the uh, episode where your man got shot <laughs> yeah, couldn't man. afford to call an ambulance. So y'all decided to one. go in the ride share, but then the ride share wouldn't take y'all. Because he wasn't wearing a mask. Yes. <laughs> but it, yo, it made so much sense of like, not just the hypocrisy, but it's almost like, I don't want, can I say it? Can I talk about it? Oh, me? please. What, okay, the guy's naked on the train, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he's got a mask on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These yeah. two, Shay and his man don't have a mask on. But, so they can't go. Everybody's on the train yelling at Shay <laughs> and doing this like, <laughs> dude, this dude's standing there butt naked and nobody got nothing to say to him. I don't know what the word is, analogy, metaphor, that, but it yeah. was the perfect, whatever one of those Hypocrisy. words are. To describe the, yeah. the world that we're in right now. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you watched it, man. That's fucking dope. No, it's a it's a weird thing. Like, I think that's where kind of most of my favorite bits come from mm -hmm. is literally just arguments and frustration. Yeah. And and then, you know, just kind of blowing it out. Like, with a show like that, you get to blow it out. You can't do it as much on SNL because the, it's live TV. It's not just your show. The real estate's a lot smaller. But, like, you know, when you're doing your own thing, like, y'all know, like, you do your own thing, you could actually do what it is you want to do. You can get right to it. So sure. it's, it's a little bit more fun. Do you feel like you're you're, you're conforming on SNL? Yeah, of course. You, but you have to. I think that's part of what makes SNL a little bit special. It's like what you can't do also makes what you do cool. So when you do see something exciting and when it does hit the mark, it, it has way more impact because you understand the rules and mm. what can't be done. You know what I mean? So yeah, like, yeah. It's naughtier. When, yeah, when you could say whatever you want, it's not, it's, not it. it's not as whatever. But like when you have a platform where it's live and you're getting very close to that line, it's like, well, yeah. how far to that line can you go without going over? Yeah. It's, it, it makes it a lot more exciting, I think. Have you seen Che's stand up? Yeah, I saw, uh, what special did I see? I, I think, saw the special. I think Che is one of the best alive right now. I saw, oh, the, I saw one of the specials I'm back in the day. barely alive. Barely well, alive. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say for how long, Mike. <laughs> it I'm might be a short alive, run. Let's be honest. But no, the stand up, you got to check the stand up, man. I mean, the thing I like about, um, you know, even the show is rooted in the stand up. I think those are the it best feels, shows. It feels like stand up. Yeah. But it, I, I don't know. You you correct me if I'm wrong here about yourself, but like I think when you start thinking in jokes, the sketches are a reflection of that premise. Boom. It's like a visual to the joke. Exactly. That's all it is. That's what so, I like. Yeah, like even with the subway thing, it's like you're seeing that going, this is ridiculous the way people act on a fucking train. I gotta wear a mask and these people don't even got clothes <laughs> on. Like I can see that as a bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. But, but now you get to see the naked dude. You get to see all these things turn into reality. Well, that's that's the ill thing because like, like I'd never had a sketch background. I, I started, you know, I started to stand up, yeah. you know. So when I got to SNL, I came in as a guest writer and I never wrote sketches before. So I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, but I, you know, I ended up getting a job because what I didn't know at the time, stand-ups are very premise rich. Yeah. So if you ever, you, you know, if you ever have a writer's room, having stand-ups in the room is great because we always kind of find the jokes. We're premise rich and we can punch up. Yeah. So there's always kind of a place for us. And then once you start kind of understanding the logic of like just building out the world, because for like for a joke, you write kind of what your perspective is. Yeah. For a sketch or for a script, you kind of write what everybody's perspective is so that it's constantly, you know, it's a little bit, it's a lot more rounded. What do you mean by that? Well, meaning that like, if I'm telling a joke, I'm I'm talking about my experience specifically. But if I'm writing a a script, I gotta keep every I gotta keep Cic Sicily alive. Yeah, right? Sicily, you know I, mean? Sicily. I gotta keep everybody alive. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, so I gotta yeah, give yeah. jokes to literally everybody. Everybody's gotta have a punchline. Everybody's gotta set up a joke. It's not just uh, yeah, about everybody one. Everybody in person. the sketch is gonna be funny. Yeah, you yeah, building yeah. a world. It, it it forces you to kind of write broader. Yeah, and you have to write from other perspectives. That's right. As stand-ups, we're just going, how do I feel about this? Exactly. But that's all I care yeah. about. I'm not even joking. I, I, Me too, but, but... I care about a comedian's personal perspective on things. That's why I don't take offense, because that's that person's personal perspective. I think that sometimes they look at comedians and say, that's him, so I'm going to use his perspective as everybody's worldview, and I'm going to try to take out him, because if I take out him, then I can take out this worldview, this ideology. I don't agree with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that you, you cheat yourself out of a lot of comedy thinking like that, you know, like, 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 I think people liked Archie Bunker not because he was a bigot, but be, like, because he was a bigot, but not because they were bigots too. That's right. Just because they understood where he was coming from. Like, oh, right. I believe that guy, you know, yeah, it's right. more honest. Yeah, that's right. Man, that's my dad, or that's my grandfather, or that's my neighbor, or whatever it is. So I, I think sometimes we kind of, got to be able to laugh at people even that we disagree with. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot, like, I mean, Burr's one of my favorite comedians, but I don't agree with almost anything he says, but it's, like, funny yeah. to watch him yeah. do what he does. I agree with something Burr You know what I mean? Well, Burr. he, Burr's out of his mind, man. Well, Goddamn, that, 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 that WNBA reality me. show joke slaps. Well, and I can't that? wait till that hits the ecosystem. I don't know if it's out uh, yet. I just saw, saw him saying recently, I don't, that shit Slaps. Yeah, keep it in the tuck if he hasn't. Oh, out yeah. <laughs> no, no, he's 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 one of the. No, nah, he's going out he's there. absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think that people get confused that like comedy comes from a feeling that you have, and we can have feelings that are wrong. Like mm, comedy, yes. a lot of times is like your knee jerk reaction. Like you know, someone cuts you off. The thing that you think about that person is the funniest way to describe them. Yeah, right. But it's not right. And then a minute later, you're like, God damn, how do I even fucking think that way about that person? So if we could look at like, I was trying to say this the other day, but like, you know how like you can kill someone and it's okay if it's a crime of passion. Mm -hmm. Like I've if you see somebody, somebody no, nah, but like if you see someone fucking your wife, like you could kill him and you could not go to jail forever because it was yeah. like, I couldn't control myself. Man, it must be great to be white. <laughs> <laughs> Never no, had that. Black people be more passionate. Okay? I didn't see like, this that's on the all you Why don't you love your murders, right? <laughs> I never had that thought, Schultz. <laughs> Is that on the wall in Ellis Island? It. Like, you where the love fuck it, you no? hear that? Schultz said, damn, you what? know how you can kill somebody? Like, huh? <laughs> you can what? Listen, there's a lot of love in our community, bro. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, we God value damn. our women. We really value them. Okay. And when someone fucks them, we get upset. So what's this hypothetical scenario uh, you're saying? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this is... It's uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is like that knee jerk reaction is a uh, is for whatever reason like it's not as bad, and I think if people saw comedy like that, then they would appreciate it and also understand it a little bit more. It's like the Archie Bunker is tapping into this feeling either you had or a feeling that you know your dad had or somebody else had, and you know that feeling is real, but you know it's wrong. No, you you I think you 100 percent correct. I always I always feel like comedy is speed. Right. Like it's all it's always the fastest reaction that connects to everybody. So mm -hmm. that's why the, the laugh comes immediate or that's how you get a room full of people to laugh at the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's got to connect. Honestly, the fastest you almost laughing before you even have time to process involuntary. Yeah, it's involuntary. So I think like, you know, when people say honest comedians, they're talking about people think more so on the lines of what's true after you thought about it and not 
the honest reaction that people actually have in the moment, which is what really connects. Mm. I still think comedians go through the filter of cerebralness before they go through the filter of emotion, though. That's why that's the only reason I disagree with the I'm saying analogy. it starts at emotion and then we can pack something cerebral around it. Y'all like, take a beat, though. We do. And that and all comes that after, all comes yeah. later. Yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, yeah, yeah. crafting really? the joke. Yeah. It's the it's the quick. When you like, when you first start a joke, like mm-hmm. in this, in this yeah. first part, you you try to get the reaction first. I gotta wear a mask and this dude's naked. <laughs> that's the that's the yeah, joke, that's right? The joke. Yeah, yeah, you got a yeah, mask yeah. on, you can barely breathe. This guy's dick is out in the subway, and you're like, this is stupid. Well, that's the premise. Yeah. That well, that is the premise. That's yeah, yeah, the idea. Yeah. That's got the you, joke. Got you, got you, got but you. then building out the world yes, got you, got you, got is you, what got we you. do after facts. Now, I would say maybe that's the only inauthentic thing that we do is that we're acting like this is this knee jerk thing. When it is something that we've had months to process and make it beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. But that, Groundhog but that, Day but that, shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just... Yo, yo, yeah, yo. Yeah, yeah. I get That's you. what yeah. comedy is. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. Groundhog Day three months in. Mm-hmm. Got you. Like, we figured out the day, but we got to act with all these people throughout the day like we haven't figured it out. Got you, got you, got you. No, that makes sense. It makes sense. The I, I, only reason I push back on that just because that's what happened this week, not to get too dark. You know, wow. the guy, the, the, the rapper Trouble, Oh, yeah. yeah he, got, he got yeah, killed because yeah, he was yeah. at a young lady's house. And I guess the guy, I, I don't know, I guess I don't know what relationship him and the woman had, but he came in upset and ended up shooting him. You know what I mean? Oh. And to me, it's like, yes, that could Shit, be... Shit, I cons- didn't know I was using that as... No, 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 but yeah. that, that could be considered a crime of passion, but it's still stupid as fuck to throw your life away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? For sure. But I think, but I guarantee you, like Andrew just said, if he was like, what happened to that guy? Oh, uh, somebody killed him. Why? Well, he caught him fucking his wife. Oh. If you got a wife, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Oh, like, it's not, it doesn't make it okay. Yeah, but the like, emotional, what? the it's, emotional reaction. Oh, you, you, you see how that could happen. I don't think that was his wife, though, but I get what you're saying. Get yeah, you're saying. Th- and that's all we're appealing to is the emotion. Take yeah. my wife, please, is emotion. Yeah. yeah. Nobody wants you to take your wife, but a little bit, you're like, all right, yeah, it's human connection. It's it's, yeah. it's human connection. It's going to a place to hear the motherfucker say your inner thoughts that you've been suppressing or that yeah. you don't have an outlet to say yourself and articulate in a way that you're like, yes, that's true. That and, I believe. And that's, we make you I'm laugh. Not alone. So it's not and it fucked makes up. You laugh. It's so, funny. So you really role play with prostitutes? Then? Absolutely not. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? <laughs> Because that's the thing nowadays. You watch things and I'm like, Absolutely right, this show not. is called, you know, that damn <laughs> Michael Shea. He's playing himself. It's like, no, no, know. no, no. Never, never did that. But, but it I is I mean, like isn't a, it role play every time you fuck a prostitute? <laughs> she's role playing. Nah, is it role playing? Nah, it's a yeah, transaction. she's acting into it. She's not, she's not acting like she's at work. Like she wants to get through it as quick as possible. <laughs> right? Like she's role, have, have any of y'all had sex with a prostitute? Yeah, you had sex with a prostitute, and I've you had sex with. If you gotta think about it, definitely. No, no, I, 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 no, 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 no. Nobody has to think <laughs> about whether they had a sex with a prostitute or not. No, <laughs> that's not something you do accidentally. I paid a stripper back in the day. Yeah, like, that's, that's she's a, a prostitute. Yeah, sex yeah, with yeah, prostitute. Yeah. No, that's not prostitution. That's well, she's a prostitute once she does it. She's providing a service, guys. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you, you fuck hookers, bro. <laughs> like <laughs> that's just a fact. It is it's what it is. Like, I think it's the difference between a stripper and a hooker. It, well, when she starts accepting money for sex, then she transitions. <laughs> it doesn't matter what she identifies as. Hyphen, this is the job. She got a hyphen job. Yeah, you know, those young hyphenates. So <laughs> <laughs> they need to give like awards for strippers that make niggas think <laughs> they're in a relationship. Yeah, like that's actual, best actress? Yeah, like literally. <laughs> that literally <laughs> should be a best actress <laughs> for strippers. Yo. That would be hilarious. Yo. Best actress at the hookies. Yeah. <laughs> call it the hookies. The hookies. Now, now do you think the stand-up <laughs> comedy scene for, for both of y'all really has Hold changed? Hold on, we're not done with this hooker conversation. Okay, okay, okay. So you've had sex with a prostitute. Yeah, for sure. I've had sex with a prostitute. But y'all in New York though. I always I didn't do it in New oh, York. I did it in Jersey. Same thing. And I did it in Amsterdam. Really? Yeah. Oh, you went to the. the See, I always the thought hookers was synonymous with New York. To, yeah. Always growing up. Amsterdam, nah. I had to do it. Yeah. It was like I, I just was like I had to do it. Never heard that one, Shay. I've heard Amsterdam. You got to smoke weed. No, what? no, no, man. It's just tons. Oh, of red juice. light district. Red light yeah, district. Yeah. Uh, it anything you it can was, imagine. It was terrible, but I had to do it. How was it? It was bad. It was bad. It was. It was sex with a lifestyles condom. It was awful. Really? Uh, 
Well, he don't. He didn't want to wear condoms. He couldn't no, pay extra to go wrong. It's what it is. He could be fucking anything with a lifestyle condom. He don't feel shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you I'm ask? Like fucking... He asked why he didn't go raw. Yeah, well, on the professional. No, no. Some people pay for that. I wasn't in love, Charlemagne. Yeah. That's yeah. Why. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't kiss her in the mouth. <laughs> see, you didn't kiss her in the mouth. Oh, nigga. But see, that's the weird thing, what? right? That's yeah. why. That's, listen, that's why. Yeah. That's why. Just tell us what happened with you, dog. Because yeah, your yeah, shit seems the most interesting. You, you tugging down I, this I, hooker. I am an intimate cancer. I okay. have. A level. Okay. I've always had a level. Okay. So when you when you have a level, you're yeah. used to being at that level. Right. Like that's why you don't go down. Like you know what I mean. Did you go down on, on no. the girl that you paid to have sex that, that, with? She first of all, I didn't look at her as a stripper. She was a nice young lady when yeah. she wasn't in the club. But yeah. both yeah. things can be true. You, huh? She could be a nice stripper. Yeah. You see, I don't worry about it. the occupation. Didn't bother me the time. But you paid when I you don't paid think her she was money. Very nice if she still pay her money. <laughs> what do you mean? Seems like she's a <laughs> filthy liar. No, 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 no. I wasn't paying her for the transactions. What were you paying her she for, Charlotte? She was the homie. Oh, this guy's a no, simp. she was Dude, the homie. Adorable. No. You're adorable. Yes. You're, that was, that was my like thing. I like the fuck. So second. she didn't even want the money. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> pro pro probably not, but you know. Probably not. Just so happened you gave it yeah, to her. you kicking it with me oh, as a little something, man. Appreciate and when you stopped you. giving her that money, like, did the relationship change at all? cool. If you think about it, you tricked her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there, there is something to that, though. That's why I'm, I... No, there is something to that. Like, I have to have... Yeah. I've always had to have some type of re relationship with a woman. Yeah. That's why I've never been... Like, I, like I've never been good at, like, the cheating thing. Uh, yeah. Just define, sleeping with a stripper. Define good. What do you mean? Define good at the cheating thing. Like, what, what, what would make you good at it? Yeah, being able just to hit it and keep it moving, right? And, oh. not, and not think about the the person. Now, some might make the argument that it would make you a worse cheater that you needed to have a whole emotional connection. No, I think that's something that was lacking in me. I, I felt like I needed to have that emotional. Uh, I didn't want to feel like I was using somebody. Ah, uh, you know what I mean. Like uh, I didn't want to feel like I was just using someone for sex. You did that, Che, on the show. I don't know why you're sitting there acting like you didn't do that. You were no, sitting, everything you, you're saying, I relate to. Yeah, like, I, I understand everything you're saying. I just never, <laughs> you know, never I've never what? been in denial. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, wow, you, you're not saying nothing wrong. It's just... <laughs> Cause you was role playing with her. He had her, he had her playing. Why are you trying to push it on him? Like, you, you did it in the show. Yeah, yeah. Because I am because I am married. <laughs> okay. And you know, I've I heard my wife hit. listening to Brand Idiots every now and then. Okay. So I'm just trying to put this out there the right way. And this is the, this is a long, yeah. long, 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 yeah. long time ago. So then say what you're trying to say. Like, hey, it, baby, if I ever cheated, it's because I really liked them. I just fucking ain't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just fucking them girls. They'll get right back. Said, right? You know what I'm saying? Right? Gotta quote Hove to get out of some of this shit. You know what I'm she didn't even want the money. <laughs> Give me a towel. <laughs> Got me in here sweating, talking about my transgressions. All I was trying to do is talk to Michael Shea about his TV show. What, what do you mean? With what? With sex? No, for sure. That's why I role play with prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I want them to believe. I want to believe that they're into. It. I've only yes. slept with one prostitute, but I want to believe that they actually and want to do it. She you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably talked to her. Thank she you. didn't speak English. Talking to you, and you guys have sex. Do you feel her? Yeah, like yeah. you said. If a girl, what would she say? If a girl stopped talking to us after we had sex with them, would we? Oh yeah, yeah. You'd feel away. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Was that the premise of talking to the therapist? No, I, I, that came later. It, to me, it was, it wasn't a really a joke about the therapy. It was more, if it wasn't a joke about the process, it was more a joke about the therapy, about I'm so unlikely to go to therapy that I'll open up with a prostitute role-playing therapy. That's the way I'd go. It was more about me being able to open up to somebody, and this was a way of me doing it. You know what mm, I mean? Wow. So that the, that's the heightenedness that is a prostitute. Okay. Do you, you know find I mean? it hard to open up to a therapist though in real life? Oh yeah, for sure. I think it's really? hard for me to to even initiate that conversation with somebody. Like in, initiate that act of getting a therapist. Ah. Really? Yeah. I think it's that black man doctor shit, you know. Yeah. And, you know, if it ain't falling off, you well, I've been going to therapy for like six years. I know you you yeah. kind of like you've changed 
culture in a lot of ways where it's a lot more acceptable. I think you're part of the reason. I think a lot of people from our community go to therapy. Thank you. I but hear I, that. But I, it didn't work on me. It didn't work. <laughs> no, I, I'm still. I'm still not going. But I understand. Like you know, a lot of people. I wonder if it's because com- comedians are so nuanced with life, though. I, so think, y'all we get, I think it's because we got an outlet. That's we, what I'm we thinking. Have a, like, we have a place yeah. to go. So it, I know that's probably not enough, mm-hmm. but I think for us, we like, ah, I got a spot. But that's like it, why I don't go on vacation, because I travel. So. Uh, but is it, is it, I wonder if it's like a vulnerability thing. Like, it's more vulnerable to go up there and say something without the punchline. Like, to say the true feeling. Ooh. Like, you're forced to Ooh. deal with why you do what you do. Ooh. Like, why do you need the audience's approval? How does it feel if you Ooh. don't? Like, that could be true, but I don't think that's that's true for me. That doesn't feel true for me. That sounds like someone who's never been to therapy. I feel like I'm in therapy right now. <laughs> that, that, that was a, <laughs> your show dug into you just now. He, that was a therapy the question. Like, leg <laughs> crossed and shit. Because you know? <laughs> that's real. It made me think about it. It's like, oh, yeah, being able to tell the truth without a punchline. It, that's, that's like, it's not as scary when you have something to land on, right? Oh, and, yeah. But you have conversations with people where you're not fucking digging for a punchline. That's not, not true. I'm not, I've never heard two comedians have a conversation and the laughs don't come a mile a second. No, not no, a minute. That's not, okay, that's a minute. Not I'll give y'all a minute then. A mile There's a, minute. a lot of more arguing. There's a lot there's more a lot, debate. A lot, of, a lot of yelling. Yeah, a lot of screaming. Yeah. But there's I can't believe yelling. you're not, you don't do stand-up. Uh, you tell him this every week, Did you see how bro. I started sweating just sitting here trying to have a fucking conversation about hookers? But prior to the past couple of months, <laughs> okay. right, stand-up is literally the most dangerous thing in the world. Mm. Getting on that motherfucker, not the y'all, you fucking maniacs, getting on that stage... And having to make a room full of people laugh on purpose? I don't know. That's not dangerous. Yeah, yeah. yeah not that you seasoned professionals. I don't well, what, know. What's worse that could happen? They don't laugh? They're coming there to laugh. <laughs> That's all good. You know what I mean? They pay money. They're like, I'd really like to laugh. And yeah. they're looking at you like, hey, please do the thing that I really want you to do. Yeah. You know, I think like early in your career, you perform in these places where it's almost like, they threw up a show and people doing their laundry. They didn't even know they were going to get a comedy show. That's tough. Oh, yeah. mm. But, you know, you go into the comedy club that somebody's been waiting two weeks to go see. They're ready to laugh. Yeah, it gets this, easier and easier. Yes. But this is coming from Michael Shea and yeah. Andrew Schultz. Yeah. Think about the think about y'all 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when y'all were just trying to make it, getting up on stage Bro, for the my first, first time, time. My first time on stage was at an open mic at, um, what was it? Comedy Corner. Remember Comedy yes, Corner on yeah, McDougal? Yeah, they yeah, had an yeah, open yeah. mic there. And it went it went terrible. You know, but it was like I knew immediately this is what I want to do. Like this, mm, it was yeah. it was already it was already fun. Even when it was bad. It's like when somebody like hands you a game, you don't know how to play first. You're like, no, 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 yo, let me try it again. Yeah, but like yeah. immediately I was going up every day, all all the time. Why? Tell me why. What, like what even though you 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 the didn't biggest do well. thing that I remember was the view. Something about being on stage and looking at everybody, mm. looking back, I was like, I just love that perspective. I don't know what it was, but that was like intoxicated, being mm. on stage. You remember the first joke that you did that got laughs consistently? No. Consistently? God, no. It took a while, I think. Mm. Do you? Yeah. And it was like, yeah. I mean, it was just like a silly misdirection joke. What was it? That was kind of fucked up. That's good. It was, it was contact with year. Right. Let's put a year on it. But yeah, it was just like... What's the premise, first of all? Before- I, it's like, I like when girls talk dirty during sex. You know, I just hate it when they say the same thing over and over again. Like... <laughs> so Shay, about your hoodie, right? Your hoodie, your, so Shay, so, your hoodie, right? So, I saw it was Pharrell a different time. Even dirty. It was I saw a Pharrell. Time. I saw Pharrell with that hoodie on. It was a different. I saw Pharrell with that I'm hoodie. Had this, on. I had this, I had this hoodie for mad long. Thank you. Yeah, let's uh, change this up. I guess my boy. That's why he called it a misdirection joke. I, I'm not, I like. Why? Thank you for trying to get me to go first. By the yeah, way, I thought you would have something nice and pleasant, bro. Out of, but in the God. beginning, in the beginning, it's like I'm. I'm still trying to like learn how everything works, and then I figured like, oh wow, I like I brought people to this one interesting place, and then took them to a very different dark place. And they reacted involunt- involuntarily. It's different for everybody, obviously. But what would you say? Because I, I, I always feel like uh, your first five to ten years of comedy is survival. Yeah. And then the rest 
then you start to slowly have something to say and try to say that. Yeah. But for the most part, you're just trying not to bomb for so long. And you think the longer you're killing, the better comedian you are, mm -hmm. as opposed to actually developing into a, like a joke teller or a, or an actual comedian. You know what I mean? I don't know how long it took for you. I think it took me about six years before I wasn't in survival mode anymore. Six or seven years or so. Mm. And, that, and then after that, it kind of started to feel like uh, I'm getting on stage because there's something I'm trying to I'm trying to crack the code. It's like yeah. graduating to like Jedi, I guess. I don't think it's grad. I think Jedi. it's just it, it's it's desire. It's, it's all yeah. desire. There's it's a difference like, between survival and then like enjoyment. Yeah. And and when you're excited to tell the jokes. Yes. Because you already know you can survive even if it gets kind of fucked up. That doesn't mean that we don't bomb still. I mean, like shit, I'm I'm gonna be bombing my ass off. Well, now I'm developing new hour or whatever. But like, there's a difference between like I really want to tell these jokes, and I hope these jokes work, so I don't feel shitty after this show. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what you're saying. And yeah, yeah. how many years in? Because there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of comedians too who I always feel like are so funny and so talented, but their development gets stunted because. The rooms they play are so competitive, they never get past where they've killed. Yeah. They never, they're not willing to because they don't want to be the one that bombs. So they're trying to yeah. keep that kill going for as long as they can and they never grow. So they that's, stay in yeah. their room. They stay and they, Yo, and they stay with that material. That's, that's called that. the uh, Zone of Excellence. I'm, re I'm reading this book right now called mm. The Big Leap. Fantastic book. Yeah. Because it's all about self sabotage and how we intentionally don't allow ourselves to be happy. And they was like, you know, right before the zone of genius, a lot of people get stuck in the zone of excellence. Yep. And the zone mm -hmm. of excellence, excellence looks great. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you you might be on television, you on the radio, you're making money on yeah. your stand-up. Like, you're there, you're you're, you're winning. Yeah. But you don't never get to that zone of genius because you're afraid to not be to comfortable. Fail. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, yeah, I feel like in comedy, it's like there's the thrill of, of a new bit for a while. And then the excitement to tell a bit that you really believe in. And then something happens where like the excitement goes. So you chase the kill. And that's when I need to like stop myself. Mm. Because when I'm just chasing a kill, I'm going, the only reason I'm feeling good about telling this is if I get this crazy reaction instead of going, okay, I've got this joke to a good place. How can I make it better? Mm -hmm. Or what's the new joke? But that kill zone is what you're saying. Like, motherfuckers get locked in that zone and they're killing so they don't realize, yeah, that the growth isn't there. No, nah, yeah. It's the trip to see. That's why I would <laughs> never do stand-up. No, nah, that's a lie. You, you yeah. No, no, I'm going to because I know me. Mm. I know I need the validation. And so if I get on that stage and don't get that validation from the crowd. Just go up tomorrow. No. Yeah. I'm going to be questioning the fuck out of myself about everything, not just that stand-up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be questioning yeah, myself works, about though. everything, not just what happened on that stage. Yeah. I'll be questioning myself about life. Yeah. Period. You know what I mean? Every yeah. single thing. Well, that's the challenge. What? Question yourself. Yeah. That's what why stand-up is wrong is with dope? questioning yourself? Oh, no, 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 no. You're right. Yeah. You're right. I just would... Everything that you're afraid of is not that scary. It's just no. literally inconvenient. You sound like a therapist. That's why I don't need that That's shit. That's what a therapist would tell you. A therapist <laughs> like, think about all the times that you've actually thought about something going wrong. Yeah. And how many times it has actually gone wrong? It could go wrong, but once it's gone wrong, then what? You, it, yeah. That's the that's the thing. It's not that I, it won't I, go wrong. It's that yeah. once it goes wrong, then what? It goes, am, once I it goes wrong, it goes viral. No, well, for you, yeah, because people are probably going to be waiting for you to bomb, but like... <laughs> They will. All yeah. them, oh, all you them, like to see people, bro. Bomb. All them donkey yeah. the days, bro. Yeah. All them donkey the days, man. But they like, gonna be on your ass. But like, bro. look, look at Tip. Like Tip did stand up, and yeah. they and they tried to catch him at a lot of his worst moments. Yeah. And now that that's done, he can. Do, no one cares. Now anymore. he's free. Now he's yeah. free to do whatever he wants. Yeah. Because the worst that, is that, happening. That is not true. And you know that's, that's absolutely no, no. When I understand what you seen a, like a video. Barclays, bro. I literally just asked somebody the other day if T.I. still doing stand up. Oh, 
Because I haven't seen him since. That's what, what I'm the, saying. What, what, this is, what this is where say? he gets good. <laughs> 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 but this is where he's going to get good because yeah. now no one really cares. Yeah. He can actually develop. He yeah. can try. He can fail. Yeah. It's not going to be, he doesn't have to read about it the next day. He yeah. can literally, this is where you get good. I could be wrong, man, but yeah. I just feel like stand up is not something you do once you get to a certain age. You know what I mean? I just is my personal. You're opinion. wrong. You're wrong. I'm wrong. I probably wrong. am. I just don't feel like, you know. Stand up might not be something that you do once you get to a certain level of fame because it's very difficult. Oh, no, that's about it's to be difficult. the new fame. It's it difficult. is difficult, but it's it's fun. To me, it's like, yeah. I don't know anybody who, other than Eddie Murphy, that was all the way entrenched and wasn't a lifer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. You always end up doing it again. Even Eddie is like still kind of making Dabbling, deals to do right? stand up. You know what I mean? Like, you can't shake it because there's no there's no reaction. Everybody about to be running the stand up soon. You might you know how it was the podcast rush for now. It's gonna be the stand up. Right? <laughs> you about to see it? I doubt it. <laughs> yeah. I they doubt just it. gotta try it once. I doubt That's it. the beauty That's of my, it. But why? Because it's hard, man. That's my point. When you get on that stage and you talking to all of these people and you say the wrong thing and they just looking at you like, word, word. And don't let them start booing, man. They might, you Whose know what? ego can handle that? Even if they do well. I'm go up tonight now. This is... Yeah, so you're hungry. Michael Che, that don't count. Nah, it's, it does. Trust me, man. Sometimes, like, you you, you bug it. He's, he's bugging. I think you just wish you would have done it. Yes, and now you're making excuses as no, to no, why it's smart that you didn't. No, no, That's no, what I think. I take it back. You know what, though? I, no. You know what made me nah, think that? Nah, it's too late. You already said you do. No, no, because <laughs> I was watching the Carlin doc this weekend. Mm. And I was like, oh, shit, Carlin used to do radio. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. then it had me thinking like, oh, shit. And then you know, I think about people like you who say, oh, you should have did stand-up. And I'm like, oh, damn, maybe did I? Maybe I should have done some stand-up. I think you have the brain for stand-up. I think you could do it. But I think that you did exactly what you're supposed to do. I agree. Like your skill I set. I agree. Is is perfect. Oh, yeah, you're, you're you fine. Did. You, did, you did okay. Thank you. But I'm saying. Tell me that shit. But I'm saying you would have had I a lot of fun doing stand-up. Yes. Nah, I like this. Yeah. I literally like this. I like sitting around. But there's stand-ups that do this. You can't, it's not mutually exclusive. That's the other thing. You know, you know what? A I, bunch of stand-ups are sitting down on stage now. <laughs> exactly, doing this. Yeah. And that's Pretty ruining much. stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking back to what you, what you were saying about that, that kills on. I, want, I have empathy for like the comics that are like coming up or, or just start making a living and get caught in that. Because... They're thinking that every set is their last set at that club. Or am I going to get booked again this next week? And it takes a certain level of either like economic comfort or complete not give a fuck or just love of the art to go. I'm just going to say fuck it. Because it's cutthroat too. I think like in any business or any craft, there's going to be about... 5% of people who actually give a fuck about doing it mm. and really, really want to do it. And a lot of people who kind of think they can do it yeah. or can get away with doing it or just do their impression of it. Yeah. You know, even in this Ooh. business, how many people that's <clears> like a actually of, yeah. into this and people that's like, I should just do one because everybody else got one. And it's, you know, and I, I know I could fake it or I know what they're mm -hmm. doing. Yes. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times people just doing their impression of what they want to yeah. do, not exactly in it or, yeah. you know. Following the trend reason. of success. Yeah. So it's like, well, yeah, it's the I, same with stand-up. Yeah, I always say people, they'll see something working for somebody else. And yeah. they'll be like, oh, I want to do that too. Yes. But that's really not what you're supposed to no. do. No, yeah, you, you got to be yourself. For somebody else. Yeah. But you got to learn that the hard way when you get yeah. up on that stage. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, I always go back to this Colin quote from, what was it, Comedian? When he's like, uh, there's like justice in comedy after five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like, you could be famous, you could be on SNL, you could do whatever, <laughs> but like, they're going to give you five minutes of, oh yeah, I'm going to laugh at this guy because he's famous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it's like, I'm going to need some fucking jokes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to ask y'all about the Carlin doc, man, because I watched the, Carlin, the Car George Carlin doc this weekend on uh, HBO Max. I did, first of all, I didn't know. Yeah, I always hear people mention George Carlin. I wasn't yeah. in the George Carlin. Fucking brilliant. Hmm. I don't see anybody doing that now. Carlin? I don't see anybody doing it's what a, Carlin It's a doing, bro. Very specific <laughs> thing what he was doing, man. Yeah. His the the I love the the nineties uh 
specials. I know a lot of people didn't love him as much because they got real dark. Mm -hmm. But I thought what he was tapping into there was like, I it was. G, I thought it was like right up there with rock specials, which mm -hmm. were some of the best of all time at that same exact time. I praise, bro. I remember it was like you know, kind of at the same time. I wish people revisited as often as you know they talk about Priors and yeah. and Chappelle's and all that stuff. But it's it's right up there. Man. Rock is the closest to Carlin. I think so too. You know, and it's you just, put you put Carlin over Rock. I mean, I relate to Rock more because he's black. And it's you know what I mean? Colin. Colin's white. And he I, is. He, but I, say, I, say, I just think he's, he's the closest well, we to a Colin. Well, we ironed out the basics, I, I, guys. I, I, <laughs> huh? What do you say? Yeah, we ironed out the basics. <laughs> <Right. laughs> real investigative rock, journalism I here. I, I, I'm, I'm always like, like, I put Rock. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm, 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 a, I'm a who came first person. You know what I'm saying? I so I don't think there is a Rock without a Carlin. It's like yesterday when Ryan Clark posted, you know, Chris Brown's more talented than Michael Jackson. How, how do you even come to that conclusion? And then everybody starts talking about, oh, because Chris does graffiti and he can. I'm like, what, what, what type of music and dancing? Graffiti. I mean, I, we're, not talk, we're not talking about anything else. We're talking about music and dancing. Yeah. Like Tank said, because he, he does graffiti and he draws. And I'm like, what are we talking about? I thought we were talking about yeah. music and dancing. So to me, Carlin came <laughs> first. And man, I'm telling you, after watching that doc, I was like, wow. It had me think about something else too, right? I don't know if... uh. I don't know if a, a black comic can make the observations George Carlin makes because mm. he's got like a, a a a a bird's eye view of the world, <laughs> mm. and he's not in these groups that he might be discussing. He's able to just sit back and like look at it. I don't with, think that's fair, though. I think I think I think you got to think of it like Carlin was like a seventy-year-old, a seventy-year-old. Genius comedian. I hate saying the word genius in comedy person, but he's he's actually that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A genius mm -hmm. 70, probably doing comedy, what, 55 years or something, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he's at a level where nobody's doing that. Yeah. I definitely think when when Chappelle's 70 or when if Patrice made it to 70 or yeah. you know what I mean? It's true. Motherfuckers, when they get to 70, they may have that type of that type of uh self-awareness and reflection. But and that wealth of knowledge. Oh, Dick Gregory, you see Dick Gregory? Oh, definitely Dick Gregory. Yeah. You know 100%, what I mean? Like, 100%. I mean, well, damn. Cause what I would love think... to see what Cosby's up to now. Really? I'm sure Cosby's he's never got... Been, he never was tapped in so, uh, as far as socially, though. Like, so I bet he's got a different perspective here. now. <laughs> 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 One thing you won't hear him say is, what else, what else? <laughs> he's uh, definitely got a lot to talk about right now. You think life showed him something? Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's like, yo, Carlin was so socially conscious and it's weird, right? Because I look at all the comedians out now with all of this shit going on in the world. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about the stuff that Carlin was talking about. People are using Carlin's old stuff mm -hmm. to talk about what's going on now. Yeah. Like what, for example? Oh, I mean, everything from everything political, like literally everything from political, from abortion to voting, right? That, racism, all of that type of stuff. I think. People address it in certain like you do you you do it in the TV show a lot. That's what that's what I like. I don't know if I necessarily see it on stage from people. I think people express that differently through different mediums now. They might talk about it on podcasts. They might talk about it, you know, when they do their sketches or their. You don't think shows. Bird does it? Um, yes, I do. Not to the level of Carlin though, but yes, I think he does. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. that's the unfair company. It's like you talk yeah. about. Yeah. That's true. A Michael Jordan of this shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. he's on a very, very short list. There's a Mount Rushmore. Carlin's on it. Yeah. But 99% of the comics that's ever, you know, picked up a mic. Did you watch Louis' last one? No, I haven't. I haven't either. And I'm surprised. Like, maybe he touched into some mm -hmm. of these things. Like, yeah, I think you're, you're, you're talking about, like, very mature thought. And, like, someone mm -hmm. who's, like, synthesized and digested life and... I never I think, thought about yeah. that. I never thought about the age thing. You're right. Yo, it's it's important. Like yeah. if you talk to old heads that are wise, like everything they say just sounds so profound, right? Yeah. So it's like, and then you add the fact that this guy's been doing comedy that long and he's just been like crafting these like bits and ideas. Yeah. Like, it also the way Carl like Carlin also kind of didn't need an audience the way he started performing when he when he started like kind of really really locking in the late mm -hmm. '90s. His shit was damn near spoken word. It was yeah. so rhythmic and you could almost listen to it without. Any of the audience, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it was, it was damn near a song. I remember even, uh, you know, in those in those days, they they would do these promos where he would just go on these long rants and 
long runs from the special. And that, that was the promo for the specials. And they were just as enjoyable. Like he was, he was just kind of on a different, on a different wave. I never thought about that. I never, I, I never factored in the age thing until just now. Yeah, just life. I just thought it was about what people cared about. No, nah, he's a G. So y'all gonna wait until what, 60? No. Nah. start going in. <laughs> You're never gonna even know when it happens. It'll yeah. probably be appreciated. Look, like, like you just said, you don't hear that much about Carlin until this documentary. Yeah. Even. So sometimes people gotta catch up to it. It might be happening, you don't even know it. Or it might be happening and yeah. we don't know it. You know what I'm saying? Like, People catch up ref- to it when, when it's when yeah. it's ready. I think it's got to also reflect like what you care about, like what's going on in your life. Yeah, like it's not your responsibility as a comedian to like reflect to the times. It's it's your responsibility to reflect on like what you care about. Yeah, that's like the rap when they tell the rappers like you don't have to rap about things of substance. Yeah, you know and those mean? songs are the worst when they're like, hey, you got to put out a love song, and then you got this like rapper who's yeah. rapping about some love shit, and, and like. He don't even give a fuck about that. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't need to hear all that. I want to hear what you care about. And the most authentic stuff usually cuts through. At least at least for me, that's the thing that I care about. And listen, listen, I don't need it from everybody. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you do have that microphone and you are of a certain stature, let's see what you can, let's see the wide range of things you can, you can touch on. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Yeah, you know? yeah. I do. I, I agree with that. That's why it frustrates me to see when people don't go past that surface level, yes. that that like you, what do you call it, the excellence of the upper upper limit theory? It it, it is that where you're like, and you're in this. It's called the zone of excellence. Sometimes being, sometimes killing at a level amongst your peers, you never want to risk going past that, mm-hmm. and you never develop past that. So there's, but it's, it's ugly. There's a lot of ugly, duck, ugly, ugly duckling uh, years in that, in that process that you kind of got to, you know, go through. And you feel like as a good comedian, you've already done your part. You've already been not good and got good. Mm. So you're not going to take the risk to be considered not good again, mm-hmm. even if it's growing. I think that's part of the reason why, like, you know, people like Dave or, you know, Rock, whatever, like they go away. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? I, they go I away like to work. That. Yeah. Like. Take some time, reflect, yeah. like figure out how your life has changed. Word. You know, like I, I know this sensation, like, trust me, I felt it. Like I, I just came off this crazy tour and the sensation is like, well, keep this ball rolling. And it's like, mm-hmm. but that's not how you're going to create the show no, that people out. need to feel like I need to go away for maybe it's years, dude. Like, and I need to be in the clubs working, but like processing how I feel about the world. And then. The crazy thing about stand-up, and you mentioned all these old dudes, is like Carlin's stand-up at the end wasn't his stand-up in the beginning. Nowhere near it. And it took a process to even get, and his stand-up was funny in the beginning. Yeah, of course. But like, you also have to go through them new growing pains when you change and start talking about different things you're going through because you might not have the tools to execute those jokes the way you had the tools to execute execute the jokes early on. Yeah, it comes to a point where the perf- where the performer actually catches up with the man. If that makes sense. Yeah. And like, what, I don't, I don't yeah. know if Dave as a performer has caught up with Dave the man yet. Cause when you hear Dave talk, it's like, he's the best at talking yeah, out loud. It's, it's pro- <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm not it's saying his, his comedy is not like that, but when you, when you hear him talk, I like hearing Dave talk more nowadays than I even do hearing the joke sometimes. No, I like the, I, I don't do. know. I like I seen, I seen him recently, man. Crazy? He's on fire. Oh, wow. He's on wow. fire. Yeah, he, wow. he unlocked something. I don't know. He's on fire. Maybe right the now, performer man. caught up with the man. Cause I, I think, think Dave is yeah. just at a point now where he does what he wants. Like he, he's, mm-hmm. it's like he reminds me of Prince in that way of like, he, he could do Prince stuff where you may not even be like I'm not into it. Yeah. But then you put him in a rock and roll hall of fame, and you're like, oh, this motherfucker is the best guitarist yeah, in the world yeah, too. Yeah, Who knew? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, he's yeah. so good that he just does what he wants to do and. You kind of at his mercy. You're like, it's, it, he's he's on a different plane, I think. No, but I, I like that because I think you should be taking those risks. Like, if you yeah, are trying to do sure. something, change something, like, yeah, who knows what you're going to do? Yo, in fucking 10 years, we could sit here and then go, you know what? I just really fell in love with one-liners and I want to get great at one-liners and I've never been good at them, but I just think there's something so beautiful about the economy of the joke. And then you could focus three years on putting out a special of just one liners. I mean, look at look at Norm, what Norm was doing, where people kind of go back to 
Who is Silly Norm, Norm McDonald? Who oh, I thought away. of Cheers as soon as you said. No, no. <laughs> yeah, the nigga from Cheers. No, no, but like, like how great Norm was at just taking old kind of joke book vaudeville jokes and, and repurposing, then, making yeah, them yeah. silly and absurd and yeah. long and drawn out. And it's like something that nobody would ever think to do, yeah. but is as as brilliant as anything anybody else is doing. Like, yeah, yeah so it, it's a pendulum. Saying you get sick of one thing, it's, it's swinging the other way. That's When's the last time y'all been thing, pushed? Man. What, on stage? Just in general, like, just as far as creatively. When the last time you saw something, you was like, oh, my God, that motherfucker is, like, taking a risk and he's oh. inspiring me. You know what I mean? Oh, well, uh, work? Oh, man. Um, I had never, I haven't seen, I still haven't seen Gerard's special, but, mm-hmm. but I worked with um, uh before that. I still haven't watched it. I just, it's just so hard for me to sit down and watch. Oh, I get it. Standard. Comedy on television. Every, com- yeah, yeah, every yeah. comic says this. It's yeah. so hard for yeah. me to like sit and watch comedy on mm-hmm. television. But I saw him live, and and I was listening to the way his brain works and the way he was approaching things. Mm-hmm. And then we talked about comedy like afterwards, and it was like it pushed me a little bit in a in a different way. Like not in a, it's just in a different way of like mm-hmm. I don't even know how to really describe it. But but he's somebody that I've kind of been paying a lot of attention to. Okay. What about you, shows? I mean, like there'll be guys that like are our colleagues and like friends that like I see, and they're just you know doing a joke about a topic that is even just like common in the ether, but it's so different and so unique and just so fun. Like I saw Dan Soder do this joke the other day, and I was like, oh fuck, he's like really thinking. Yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. like being like really thoughtful about this thing. And so much heart too, and everything he yeah, does. Yeah, he like, cares. Yeah, he it's truly like, does. He's so attached with the material. I, every time he gets on stage, I say it, and I'm just like, "You're being 100 percent you." Yeah, you're not even being comedy, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're being you, you. Dan Soder, go check out Dan. Dan's but like, a nice guy. You say what? He's a nice guy. Oh, he's great. Yeah, you know yeah. him from Guy Code. Yeah. But like, yo, know, so there's like new guys that I'm seeing are young and doing that. That's what I don't know. Who's the new guy? Oh man, I mean, like my boy that that opens uh for me, uh, Mark Gagnon is great. Derek Poston is fucking great. I mean, Derek's down in Austin. Like, there's Eagle Wit, you know, Eagle Eagle's funny. Like, there's a lot of like young guys that are fucking hilarious. But I'll be honest, the shit that still pushes me is like old stuff. Like going back watching like old Patrice or like yeah. I watched Bringing the Pain just the other day because like I wanted to see if it lived up to like my memory of it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and it killer. fucking crushes the memory. It's, like, it's even killer. Bernie, bro, we always talk about, like, that set, the Bernie, I ain't scared of you. Like, yeah. I think, like, I was, I bring that, I think that might be, like, the most perfect five minutes of just stand-up. I'm not talking about, like, premises. I'm talking about, like, interaction between audience and human being. Like, in essence, what happened there that was five yeah, that minutes. Was, that's, like, a perfect storm. Of, it's magic, Yeah, bro. yeah, it's magic. That's, like, crazy. And it's, like, I look at those moments and I'm like, okay, well, what's happening here? How do I, how do I create magic like that? You know who else got a couple of things like that too? Eddie Griffin. Oh, dude, Eddie. Eddie Griffin's Def Jams. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are like, like melt the walls. It's like yeah, yeah, crazy right. shit. Like, I don't know how you got all bro, of these things to work. Y'all need to watch Ray J, bro. Ray J. Seen Ray J. Yesterday. No, what he did? What is this guy? Gay said, Pride Ray, Ray J. Ray J? <laughs> you want to see Ray J? Go to Ola. You just cut off your trip. I'm going to give y'all what? I'm going to do this ad, but when we Yo, come back. Before, before this ad, this is one of those things like, stand-up is, is one of these things like, you're wild for Ray J. But like, Eddie, Eddie Griffin, playing? Eddie Griffin is a perfect example where like, like, you'll see certain people in movies or like TV shows and they're like, become like actors and they become successful, right? And they're great as actors, they're whatever, but like, sometimes you see their stand-up and then you go, oh, I oh, totally understand why the raw, they oh, got opportunity. what happened here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. You For see sure. it and you go, oh, I understand why someone would go, please, can we make a movie yeah. with you? Yeah. Because it's so, it's lightning. Yeah. It's like literally, I've never seen anything like that kind of. It, oh, yeah, Cat, yeah. Cat Williams, bro. Like you saw. Cat like, Williams, Cat, Eddie like, Murphy, Patrice O'Neill would have been there. Jay Just Leno. Rock. I never saw Leno. Jay Leno was one of those guys that was like That's what I heard. The best, the best. And really? then, yeah, man, it was like the best working comic. Or Seinfeld. Or like there's just guys that that got kind of blank checks for how hard they were killing. What about Conan? 
Conan was never a stand up. Conan he wasn't? No, he was a uh, He was a writer, right? Yeah, he was a lampoon guy and then he's he's uh was a writer at SNL and then got the job. Oh wow. The Lampoon is the uh Harvard like, Lampoon. Yeah, yeah, the comedy what magazine? Yeah. Yeah. But they have like a whole club out there. We're gonna pay some bills and we're gonna come back and do church announcements and then I wanna play y'all the greatest living comic living today and it's Ray J. Okay. Okay. I'm using yeah. bathroom. Get get the get the Ray J clip ready, Taylor, because I Ray J the singer, Ray J. Ray J, Brandy's Brand, brother. Brandy brother. Okay. Keeps. Salute to Keeps. Two out of three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they're 35, and there are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. Keeps offers both. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. Low-cost treatments start at just $10 per month and Keeps offers generic versions, discreet packaging, and proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key, all right? Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so act fast, all right? If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots to get your first month free. Keeps, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots. Idiots. And today's show is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Look, man, I know we're in the crib a lot, okay? But it might be time to get off the couch and get back into the bedroom, okay? Blue Chew can help you. All right, guys, we know that confidence can take you far in life. And when you feel confident, you're, you're at your best, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate, all right? That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients in Vi as Viagra and Cialis but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code IDIOTS at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code IDIOTS to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots podcast. Now let's get back to the show. The announcements, the announcements are a very important part of what we do in church. All right, it's time for some church announcements. Yes. Yo, you said you had a big announcement this week. I lied. You lied? <laughs> I lied. I don't. <laughs> I'll announce it when I get back from the from the honeymoon. Oh. I go, I, yeah, I go on my honeymoon next week, man. Okay, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's my big announcement. That you're going on your honeymoon? I'm going on my honeymoon. Uh, Michael Shea, you got any announcements? No. You don't got no shows and nothing? <laughs> no, man. I'm trying to take a break, man. I'm a, I'll am i probably do some stand-up throughout the week, but I ain't, I ain't promoting nothing. Okay. Go check out Michael Che's HBO show. Man. That damn Michael Che. It's, re it's, it's really good. I'm check not out his stand-up. He's got specials out right now on Netflix, both of them. HBO, yeah, got, or, HBO got, or Netflix? I got two on Netflix. Netflix. Maybe another one soon. Okay. So go check out his stuff. He's fucking great. Mine is simple. Uh, go to blackeffect.com. Make sure you subscribe to all the podcasts on Black Effect. Salute to my guy Tank and uh, Jay Valentine. R&B Money Podcast came out last week. Uh, debuted at number one on the Apple Music charts. And Apple Music, that, 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 the music charts in podcasts are like a very, very, very tough category. I mean, you got everybody from Million Dollars Worth of Game, the Quest Love, the Big Facts, the Drink Champs, and you know, they debuted at number one. So salute to those guys. And I want to tell everybody, man, if you're in New York City this weekend, um, the Tribeca Film Festival is this weekend. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I uh, I have a movie that I executive produced at the Tribeca Film Festival. It's called um eighty eight. Uh, stars Brandon Victor Dixon and uh and Tori Notton and Orlando Jones and a few other people. We got four screenings. Um, what is that about? Uh, it's a political thriller. It's a political thriller. It's about a financial director who works for like this super pack. It's it's good. It's a political thriller. It's a political thriller mystery. It's about, you know, it's good. Did just, I sell it? Did just I... say you don't know what the fuck the movie's about. I do you know just what the movie the check, is bro. about. I just, just say you cut the check. <laughs> you explained it. I you still know, don't know. It's yeah, about like, like government mistrust and like it's a political thriller. It's about yeah. a black man that works for the government. It's kind of Wait a minute, is it like a by the Dorish. political thriller? Or? This guy is crazy, man. <laughs> but it's just about, you know, 
you working for the government, but then you don't actually trust the government because you're a black man. It's got a lot ah, of yeah, okay. it's got a lot of spook by the door elements. But okay. um, the first screening is sold out this Saturday at eight thirty. Um, but then we have another one uh, Monday, June thirteenth at six p.m. Tuesday, June fourteenth at nine p.m. and Saturday, June eighteenth at two fifteen p.m. All at the Tribeca Film Festival. So just go to TribecaFilmFestival.com, type in eighty eight, and um, get tickets for that. Now let's get back to the show. Okay. Let's listen to the greatest comedian who I want two great comedians from this era to be inspired by. Mm. You know, y'all talking about all of these <laughs> Burrs and Harlins mm. and Rocks and Chappelle. What about Ray J? Mm. Okay? Let's let's see. Listen to Ray Jizzle. You might want to start from the beginning. This is so. Ray J on celebrating Pride oh. Month. Ray J said there needs to be more straight niggas giving love to the gay niggas. Okay. So you ain't never said what? nothing that flaps like that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Let's hit it. A lot of niggas that's, that's, that's straight, they don't be trying to shout out to, 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 to the gay community and all my gay niggas the right way. So I got to do it because I want to make sure niggas know that I'm showing nothing but love and that we fuck with y'all. We have, we have multiple businesses together. I got a lot of friends. All right, I was talking to my nigga Dean, but now I'm talking to y'all. Listen, I just want to say that it's Gay Pride Month. Shout out to all my gay niggas. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in the LGBT community. I told my niggas that it need to be more straight niggas, giving love to the gay niggas, and I hate using the word, the N-word, but um, damn, did this filter got a nigga tongue red? Yo, stop. <laughs> he's giving hey, it up. Yeah. Ray giving it up. Though, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I got a lot of gay friends and I got a lot of real niggas that's gay. And we make a lot of money together, but it ain't just about the money. It's just niggas is cool and that, you know, whether you a gay female or a gay dude and you a straight dude, whatever. Like, but it need to be more straight niggas showing love to the community. Get to the punchline, Taylor. Get to It's like, you know, what you what, what what's the what you what you afraid of or oh, I don't you know that? what it is, okay. but there's nothing but love over here. Shout out to all the glam squads that that <laughs> look up. I, I can't really see. I can't really see. Um, I, I wear glasses, so I can't see the comments, but I can tell you how I feel. You know what I'm saying? And I'm on my way to He's work. He's legally blind. And I just decided to come on live, and you know what I'm saying, and just give, give all my gay people, my gay brothers, my gay sisters, give them all, give them all their flowers. You know what I'm saying? It, it, and, and you know, for me, I want to sponsor the whole Gay Pride Month and do Ray Pride. Ray Pride. That's it. Ray Pride. Come on, man. Come on. That's the greatest living comedian walking the face of the earth. He's addressing a social issue. He's picking up the current climate that we're in. We're in Gay Pride Month. What's better than that, man? Yo, that's amazing, wow. bro. I thought that he was going to be like, psych, I don't fuck with that gay shit. <laughs> He's all in. He wow. said he want to call it Ray Pride. Yeah, Ray Pride is wild. Uh, yeah, I mean, his skin looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah, like, his skin looks right. so Shout good, out to the bro. Glam Squad. Yeah, real Shout talk. Out to the Shout squad. out to the Glam Squad. Yeah, yeah, the glam squad. Is glowing. <laughs> What's that? Gay people do more than makeup? No, that's true, but they also do makeup. <laughs> and they got his tongue looking wild red. Shout out like, to the Glam Squad. Yeah, what did they put on his tongue, though? A lollipop. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you see how you flirted? You gave him a little tongue, crazy. Little tongue like, in the middle of the video. to make my tongue red? Uh. <laughs> Man, let me tell you something. Shout out to Ray J. This, is, this actually is one of the best gay prides I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Yo, Ray, Ray J is so amazing. <laughs> He's just so amazing at being incredibly straight-faced. Better than car? Better than who? Carlin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's better than Carlin. At, dude, remember the thing with the glasses where he's like, you can't break them. You can't break them. You can't break them. And the dude oh, yeah. just snapped them in half. <laughs> Yo, this is what he is. This is the guy's raw entertainment, bro. This has been the best America's pride greatest month. comedian. Yo, they got the gay pride Averex. Yeah. They got the the Burger King. They have a gay pride Averex. You didn't see the gay pride Averex? No, where, where you man, been, no. Shay? They, I where, ain't been shopping been, in a Jay? while, apparently. <laughs> Burger King got the... Uh, the 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 top and bottom burgers. Mm. What? Yeah, so it's like two tops. They have two tops. Man, stop the... it. Yeah. 
I'm not making none of this shit up, bro. There's this no real. way Look. Burger King got <laughs> bottom on bottom yeah, burgers, bro. They do. I'm gonna show you the burger. <laughs> Yo, you gotta like dick to another level to have your hamburger have bottom bottom, bro. Bottom wow. bottom. Hold on. Wait, low, low key, look, I want to try the top top. Look, look, that shit. Come on. I want bro. top top. Come on, man. No. But a gay relationship on, would be top bottom. It would never be top top. That's why so I don't understand why. No, no, I guess it's for the, no. Same Say same, what? Same sex. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. I just thought if you was a bottom, the, the you get the bun the bottom, is the same the sex. Bottom. It's a bun. It's, yeah, it's this is ridiculous. I did not know that. These people are ridiculous. <laughs> what do you mean? Wait, do you these think a, as a gay person, like you'd be offended by that? Like, wasn't it bad to have corporate interest in a in an actual struggle? Yeah, because it means it's not. Well, no. Like, I, who are you struggling against yeah, like, if all the corporations got your back? Like, like, are you going to do burnt buns for February? <laughs> 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 no, they did have the black bread. Burger had the black bread at one point. Pumpernickel bread. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that'll be wild. And for Juneteenth, yeah, they, they do a black you. bun and they have like red, green, and black seeds. Yo, seeds. that'll be wild. Yeah, up. it feels weird, right? It does. But what if this is the what if these are gay people that are coming up with these ideas? What if these are gay people that work in these corporations and they're coming up with these ideas? I mean, gay people got to be more creative than this, bro. Hey, this is straight people ideas for sure. <laughs> you think so? Don't you think? Like, wouldn't yeah. gay people like it if both sides of the bun was the same? Like, that's a straight <laughs> dude trying to understand what gay people would like. Look at this. You think gay people thought of that? Gay nah. people just could be like, hey, just give me a burger, bro. I like burgers. They're good. No, nah, I don't see. Yeah. Hey, man. Salute to all the gay people. I respect y'all so much because... Gay yeah. people would sold hot dogs, bro. bro. Gay people just take that's the, what they would the they would have hot dogs, the glizzy, <laughs> hot dogs, the glizzy, <laughs> the glizzy. <laughs> that glizzy. Just, that glizzy, just, just do a hot dog for the month. That'd that, be fire, that bro. Glizzy, hell yeah. Listen, gay people are the best, bro. Gay people take what they want. Gay people got seventy percent of the alphabet is theirs now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they took the rainbow. The rainbow is theirs. When yeah. you see a rainbow, you don't even think of God's promise no more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Wait, is that what the rainbow used to be? Yes, what did you think I didn't it was? I didn't know there was any religious implication whatsoever. Yes, with man, the after Noah built the ark and, well, no, not yet, yeah, Noah built the ark and then yeah. after the flood, there was a rainbow and it was a rainbow to promise that God will never flood the earth again. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he had a few floods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> promises get, promises <laughs> delivered. There's been more floods. It's not, it's not the last flood. Not to that happened. magnitude. Um, <laughs> what do y'all think of Lori Harvey and Michael B. Jordan's breakup? Friend of yours, Michael Shea? Michael B. Jordan? Uh, no. What do you think? <laughs> what do I think about their breakup? Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was wrong how they did him at the, the Warriors game. Did you Why see Why do that? people even tie the two together, though? He was just saying. Bro, there's, do you follow Graham Wizard chat? And then I can't say the word on Instagram. What is it? He's the best follow on Instagram. What's the, what's the follow? Like, what's he the, what's posts some picture of, uh, it, I just said it, but the, there's the N word at the end. Oh, and oh. Uh, and he's just the best. He's just fucking hilarious. And uh, he had a, he had the video of Michael B. Jordan like at the front row. Yeah, and and like for whatever reason, he kind of looks like he's getting choked up. I a little saw bit. that, and he was like, "This is new Michael B. Jordan crying meme or some stupid yeah, shit like yeah, that, dude." <laughs> well, damn, Poor what guy. happened? I don't know what happened. I just know Steve Harvey's making jokes. All I know is white women are happy, man. Why? Because well, they get wait, Michael B. Steve back. Harvey they get Michael B. Jordan back, baby. Isn't Steve, it, well, Lori Harvey's his daughter, right? Yeah, that's his daughter. I didn't know that. <laughs> what? Yo. Didn't know that. You didn't know Lori Harvey was Steve Harvey's daddy? He never mentioned it on no, Family I mean, Feud. No, I didn't know Steve Harvey was Lori Harvey's <laughs> 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 I never heard him talk about that. Well, how would I know that? And Ooh. that's why y'all can't get mad at Jack Harlow. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? What, every, what did Jack Harlow do? He didn't know Brandy and Ray J was brother and sister. That's yeah, reasonable. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. He's 20 years old. Yeah, That's well, they the haven't been brother and sister that? for 10 years minimum. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, you know, culturally. You know what, what? I mean? Like, Ray J got the headphones. Nah, Brandy I mean, doing what she's doing. No, that's true. No, that is a great point. And I don't know why people don't understand that to a certain generation, they know Ray J more. But I yeah. also, like, only know Lori Harvey from, like, pictures. Like, I don't know what, is she an actress? Or? I don't know. Okay. So I, don't, I don't know. Well, I guess that's why I know her from pictures. Well, <laughs> well, if Michael B. Jordan goes to white women and never comes back, he, you know why now. You think Lori goes did back it? To Lori's yeah. No, I'm serious. Okay. If he goes if he goes back to white women, it's... Look at that stash, bro. That's a hell of a stash. <laughs> He's going back to white women. Bro. <laughs> that's the, that's yeah. an Apollo Creed stash. Yeah. For, 
for Steve Harvey. Oh, he's trying to get her back. You saying? Yo, that's I don't know wild. him that well, but he's a, he, <laughs> yo, he got a big suit. He got to come through with that's, the big oh, that's suit. Wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> Jordan grew his mustache he's like a, Steve Harvey to try to get Lori back. breasted purple suit. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, that's uh, fucking hilarious. Michael Che, there's been rumors that you might leave SNL. Any truth to that? No. I'm not leaving. I'm I'm coming. You back. said that emphatically. I'm not like leaving. You just know I'm not what the leaving. future holds. No, I, I yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna stay. <laughs> 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 we had, I'm laughing because I try to go. I, we, I'm laughing because me and Andrew were arguing about it. I was like, yo, I'm out. And he was like, you sure? Every I time like, I talk out. to him, we have like a yearly, you know, catch up. <laughs> and and he's like, yeah, this is the last year, bro. I'm gone. It was, though. It was. It was. It was. It literally was. Five years yeah. running? No, nah, it was my, my contract was up and I was I was out. But uh, we negotiated a like a different type of situation. That was, like more money? It wasn't the money. It was <laughs> every uh, rich motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. Honestly, it was it was more the time. I just wanted uh, time to produce more, be able to produce and and uh, develop other projects. And they kind of they kind of hooked it up where I don't have the same demand. I think. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, that's all remains to be seen. I think once you're in the building, you never know. But. Uh, so far, it feels good. But that's not such a good space to do that because it feels like they uh, allow their talent to go do other things. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it, especially recently, I think, uh, I mean, I always liked, I, I never disliked us, no, or, you know, working there. It was just more so I felt like it ate up a lot of time where I can't tour as much or mm-hmm. I can't, you know, I can't uh, write as much, you know, kind of sucks up a lot of your energy. But mm. hopefully this situation is a little bit more comfortable. That's why, Andrew. You think he's lying? Yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Of course he's lying. But you would have had to announce no, it already. You got to make an hour and, and a half TV show every week. It's insane. It's hard. It's, it's, it's not insane. There's no way they're going to be like, why don't you do a part-time? Time. How much are you involved in, though? I mean, I know you, I know you do Weekend Update. Yeah, And well, then you're the head writer, but what does that consist of? Well, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of meetings, a lot of, um, you know, kind of decision making and and uh covering for the cast and stuff it's it's a lot it's mm-hmm. it's also stressful it's like i always say it's like it's like planning a wedding every week because <laughs> you know it's extremely important and special for that host and then we have another one who's extremely you know what i mean invested in it the following week and the following week so it's, it's a lot that kind of culminates to one moment live on television and if it's bad you know you, you kind of have have a thick skin about it. And then when it's great, you don't get no credit. Like, you don't... Yeah, like, you do. Like, who, like when Kim, Kim, Kim Kardashian delivers a great monologue. Yeah, yeah. And the first thing I hear is, well, you know, Dave Chappelle and Michelle Wolf wrote that for her. I'm like, well, what about the guys and women that's there every week? To, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, but they, they did, though. The, uh, I went back and forth with uh, Michelle a lot about that. Like, um... It, but a lot goes into that, you know, mm-hmm. like Michelle, Michelle really held that down. Like I was, it was, I don't know how she did that. That was like, it was kind of dope to see. Oh, she did it on her own? I was her, Between her and Dave, but, yeah. I, but I was talking to her more. So Dave is impossible to talk to sometimes. Like he's, you know, he's always busy. But um, uh, yeah, they, they really came through for that one. But even when a, even when a, a sketch or a bit or something slaps, you still, I guess you don't care, though. You're the head writer. You don't care if you get credit, right? No. SNL is something that gets appreciated sort of in the past. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it may feel like it kind of all goes away, but then when you leave, they're like, oh, man, remember what you used to do? You know, like, all of that stuff becomes, like, this stuff, there's bits on SNL that people still talk about from 40 years ago, literally. You know what I mean? Or 30 years ago or five years ago. And you kind of, we do so much of the show that it, it's mm-hmm. it's impossible to keep up, you know, and especially now like everything's so cyclical and it's so much content that mm. if a sketch sticks out, that's pretty impressive. So how know? do you know when it's time to walk away? Like I what like from a show like SNL? Because I mean it can range, right? You can be somebody like Keenan who's there for nineteen, twenty years. But you I can mean be somebody like Rock who was there for what? A season? How long was Rock there? Maybe three, Like I think. three to a three, yeah, yeah. About three years. I How do you decide when you're in your 
excellence zone? Is that zone it? of excellence? Yeah. How do you decide if you're in your zone of excellence? But the time G- I knew this was coming. I knew this G- was coming. You open up the excellence to genius. No, he said that. But yeah, I did. Yeah. No, I, I think it's. I I just selfishly. What I, love I say of, this to you all the time. Yeah. I just selfishly am like I would love to see what you could create with all the time. I don't even know how you're putting together enough material to have specials nope. while you're doing these things. It's like, you're that right, to me you're is right. fucking mind boggling. And you know, I celebrate you a lot. You notice. I appreciate so, that. Andrew. So, I and, and it's real. And like, likewise, I tell, likewise. Well, I, I, respect. We've known each other for years. Respect. But like, I'm just saying, like, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm a busy guy too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I know it's a drain and I'm just like, selfishly, I'm like, man, it'd be really cool to see what Mike did with a year. I can see why Show says oh, that. Oh, word. Based, word. Off your TV, based off the TV show alone, I can see why yeah, Show says that. You see it. You start to see it. Like, it's, it's, it's something that I'm working on now. But also, too, I, I do, like, you know, SNL is addictive, man. It's like, it's literally. Really? Yo, it's live television. It's the, it's the, just think about, like, I know, I'm, this is sound like a, like, a, like a show right now. But honestly, what comedy show is covered like this where people know who's on it, people, write about what happened. Even if it's bad, they write about that it's bad. They write yeah. about when yeah. it's good. They write about what, you know these moments of yeah. the show. It's not, there's not that much event television anymore, man. It's not appointment television. Where everybody's point. watching at the same time. Everybody's following at the same time. Yeah, everybody's yeah. talking about it. They talk about point. it like it's a fucking Yankee gang. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yep. it is something about having that moment or having that opportunity or that platform to be able to Lock in. It's it's a great compliment when something happens Monday or Tuesday and everybody's like, oh, I can't wait to see, you know, you get messages. What y'all going to do about it? You know, I'm sure yeah. it's similar, you sure. know, for you guys where they like they can't wait to see y'all dig into some shit. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a platform that you can still kind of do that on a on a global scale, which is kind of dope. So but that, that, that now, is cool. But now that you've seen that, like, I mean, when we first started, probably when you first started working on SNL, like the. The, the, the climate was different. The opportunity was different. It was sure. harder to get like your creativity out there. Sure. And now with the internet, you've seen like probably even your own stand-up clips go viral out of nowhere. Yeah. And then you're like, oh shit. I imagine you must think like, oh shit, I could just create things myself and then have this same viral impact when I want. Mm-hmm. And if you know you could do it on SNL, then you can do it yourself. I do think that I think that's true, but I also think that it's it's still I don't know it's still something about it. It's like, still it feeds I feel everything like else. Darth Vader right now. Something about hey, no, no, I, I, I get and I'm trying to fans. drag you into. The I know, dark side. I know. You, you've been, but but also we're from the same place. Yes. So to me, I I like it. I like I like that there's there's spaces where I could go everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, I can yeah. do that. I could go to work, but also yeah. I could put on my hard hat and, and get yeah. it out the mud too. Is there is there ever like and I always wonder, do you ever feel like a social responsibility? Like you being there have given more opportunities to different music groups or different even cast members. That, is that true? You know, it's funny you say that because when you first said that, I was going to immediately say no. Right, and then when you when you said that other part, I was like, oh yeah, actually, I do think that uh, there is some merit to that because when I first started at SNL, I was the only black writer there, yeah, and it was Keenan and and uh, Jay in the cast, yeah, and you know what people don't realize is it's like when you well you would obviously realize it maybe, but a lot of people don't realize what I didn't realize initially is like you do, you come in these rooms. And you're the only black voice there or the only kind of black ears, not even voice, black ears, where something could be very funny and specific and nuanced. And if they're just not in the culture, they don't get it. Like they don't get it. They don't get it. They're culturally clueless people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's times, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And also, even if it's not, it's not even just skin color. Sometimes it's just background. Sometimes yeah, there's, there's, there'll be a black person there that's culturally cool. You know what I mean? There's going like, so, and, and, and vice versa. Yeah, and yeah. vice versa. It goes the other way. Mm-hmm. Well, this is where I'm like, I don't know what the fuck this is. But yeah. if I was a 22 year old white college student, I would be like, this is perfect. You yeah. know what I mean? So like there's times, that's what I love about the show is that now I do think there's a good mix of backgrounds where, you know, Chris Red could do something or I could do something or, you know, Ego could do something and it could be what it is. It doesn't have to be like, well, how do we make older white people understand this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, 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 this is funny. And being head writer or being, you know, in those meetings, I could say, yeah, 
we should get Gerard in or yeah, we should get, you know what I mean, Chappelle in or yeah, I mm -hmm. think we should, whatever. You could kind of be that extra voice of reason for, that might have been ignored. And, you know, not it's there. not, like a lot of times it's like, uh, I want to say it's not racist, but it's more like institutional where it's like, you end up kind of like hiring your friends and you don't even consider what somebody could feel about something because they're not in the room to give any pushback or give any praise. And of then course. like, you have someone like you in there and all of a sudden you get to start hiring the people that you believe in or at least suggesting the people that you believe in. Mm -hmm. And then those other people are in the room going, oh, wow, I didn't even think about it from this perspective. Yeah, we need more of that perspective. And then through osmosis, you create this thing. For sure, for sure. And then that's, especially when you see it work, then they know that's the thing that can work. You, when you yeah, guess yeah, right, yeah, then yeah. they're looking for more of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it absolutely is something. But Again, you don't go in thinking that. You go, as a comedian, you go in thinking, I'm just trying to write something funny. Yeah. Or I'm just trying to bring in people who I think will be funny. Right. And that's it. That's, yeah, it's that's not the your extent primary of, goal. Yeah, you never, that's But, but you never must that. have felt it, like, after years of being there and, like, seeing a little impact. Like, you didn't think about it until I asked you. I can't believe that. Just when you said it, I didn't think about it. But, like, once you finish your sentence, I was like, yeah, kind of. I well, guess, you, when I you guess walk in a room with the only black true. person, you know you're bringing something unique, more than likely. You don't, yeah, but you don't, I, you don't know what you are until somebody tells you in a lot of, in a lot of cases, you know, like I don't walk in thinking, well, I'm the only black guy here or I'm, I'm the black guy here. You kind of know that later on, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you know it selfishly as a comedian, you, when you're on stage, you're alone. You're not the only black guy. You're not the guy, you're whatever. You're just, trying to do what you're trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like when you walk into these rooms, you're just trying to do the jokes. And then once they're not working, you're like, oh, this is too black. Or, oh, oh I, I can't say, it. you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, okay, I'm I got it. because I'm black. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but it, 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 do, it happens like right, that. Right, like, right, you, right, you'll right. write, because I, I started out as a writer. I wasn't yeah. just, I wasn't performing on the jokes. So if I'm writing a sketch, there's words Act, yeah. Certain actors can't say. Yeah, yeah, well, there's yeah, language yeah, yeah. they might not even get. Yeah. You know so what I mean? You're reminded so, that you're black. And you're yeah, reminded. Yeah, 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 then yeah. you find out. Oh, that's right. I'm the only nigga here. Like yeah. this should should be funnier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think you're lying. I just don't believe you. Like so, so when you walk, <laughs> when you walk in a room, shows yeah, and you're you're like you're the only white person. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're pretty sure you're the only white person. You know, it's funny. I walk into this podcast every single. Week and I'm the only white person. This might be different though, because this is. But you guys are my friends. Like I think yeah, once yeah, you yeah, know yeah, people, yeah, yeah. do you feel like the only white person right now? No, that's what I'm. That's my point. But yeah. but but you guys are all my friends. So I'm walking into a, a a group of friends. I'm walking into a room with friends. If it was complete strangers and I walk in, yeah, you know, um, I, I'll probably leave as soon as I can. <laughs> you know, just for safety, for my own safety. Okay. When you, you know. Okay. When you uh, in a meeting, if you okay. if you go into like a meet, like a pitch yeah, meeting or, or some <laughs> shit like that, do you God. feel like you have? Do you are you always conscious of? All right, it, it scores two to four. Yeah. Are oh, you really? really? You think you I told y'all that I've written about? I, I wrote about that in my second book, just because, like, man, I mean, I guess because of the era that we're in, and it's so stupid, and this is why you got to disconnect from social media because it's like you always feel like this audience is with you. I think it might be some also to you from the south, right? Yeah. That's also a different. Oh, hundred percent. I think mm. New York City is a little bit different. Where hundred percent, there's no such thing as like black 100%. and white rooms. It's kind of all 100%. integrated everywhere. Nah, mm. you, I you, go, of, you know what I mean? Hundred percent. I can think of times me and my wife walked into like a restaurant in our hometown when we was young because we've been together forever. So we walked in this restaurant. It was called the Barony House in Mount Corner, South Carolina. It's still there, I believe. And like literally just whiteness. All, all the patrons, everybody working there. And as soon as we walked in, we looked like, yeah, we not staying here. And the the, the host was like... And it's like southern white shit. They're wearing mm -hmm. like khakis and stuff like that. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> The host yeah, was yeah, like, why y'all yeah, yeah. leaving? College yeah. polos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boat <laughs> shoes, and she, The white host just said to us, oh, why y'all leaving? Because y'all black? No. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yeah. White Because <laughs> you know yeah. They felt that comfortable? Yeah. And she was like, nah, come in. I'm like, nah. Mm. But I, no, I, it's not even that, that she felt that comfortable. She must have known who she you was were. Aware. No, I was, I, was, I was nobody. Oh, wow. She was, she was aware of the insecurity. Our, un our yeah, yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. yes, it is. I think it is something with, with the Yeah, style. you know what's weird is like, yeah, discomfort in spaces. Sometimes I'll feel that if I'm like, if I'm in New York and I walk into a place that's predominantly black, but it's just New York, I don't feel it at all. If I'm like 
in like Connecticut and I walk into a, like a bougie ass like country club and it's predominantly white, I'll probably feel like a little discomfort just because like I don't I might not know all the etiquette or like I might not know like the yeah. elevator talk as well. You know, so for me, I guess it's like specific cultures. But if I walked into like like a like a all everybody African Nigeria, just Nigerians, and I might be like, oh wow, I'm I'm distinctly not culturally yeah. in line with what's going on in this room. But if I'm just walking into like a fucking sneaker shop and I'm the only white guy, I'm like yeah. not even. I think we I'm all think, yeah. I'm not think about it that much. Like we, if, I, if we're in a room and there's one woman, it's like, yo, guys, look alive. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. don't, don't say nothing crazy. You know what I mean? Like, just try to make her as comfortable as as possible. Like, I, but I think something has to happen for you to like. If I if I enter a room and there's one woman, I might say something, then hear it and be like, oh, shit, there's a lady. My bad. You know what I mean? Like whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. it is or or anything racially <laughs> or or class wise, whatever. Be like, oh, you got to think about it for a second. Because yeah, it's you curse, there's a kid in there. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, oh, there's a child here. Yeah. Oh, in the barbershop all the time. You know? yeah, yeah. Be in the barbershop, you're in there talking shit, you know, getting your hair cut, music, yeah, yeah. fucking Fuck you! Shoot everybody yeah, yeah, in! They're yeah. like, yo, yo, yo! Kid just walked in. Turn down. Oh you know yeah, I mean? old woman. Old woman just walked like in. Yeah, yeah, yo, right, what right, if right. Trump said that was just barbershop talk? I think he did say that. No, he, he said, said it was locker room talk. talk. But what if he said barbershop talk? Barbershop talk would have would have hit a that little different. Sl- <laughs> <laughs> no, that would have hit a little different. I'd be like, <laughs> are you I kidding me? He's not wrong. You know why? You know why? Because everybody goes to the barbershop. I ain't never been in no goddamn locker room. I'm like a fucking athlete to you. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. Like the barbershop, you understand that 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 point of reference. You get it. Oh, that's deep, man. I would have I would have understood a little bit better. You miss Trump, don't you? No, I don't miss him. I, a little. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't. I Saturday didn't, Night Live, Michael Chase said he misses Trump. <laughs> 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 I miss. I miss. <laughs> I miss having hope in Biden. Yeah, oh, that's done. <laughs> I don't I think we ever that. had it though. Yeah. I think I think there the hope. The, I, I, don't think we ever, I don't think we had hope I, in Biden. I, miss the, you know, I, I, was, I don't think there was ever hope in Biden. Yeah, yeah I, I think people just wanted Trump out, but there was never actual. Hope I think there was in hope in not Trump, but I don't know if it was. Hope I'll give you that. Biden. All right, maybe that that's a better way to say. Yeah, it. it's going to be I better miss without hope him. Not Trump, and it's cal- I don't know. It's calmer without him, without a doubt. What Trump? Without Trump, yeah. Like oh, Trump is was a psycho. Yeah, like the the environment is just nah. calm. No, 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 no. I mean, nah. like, bro, are you kidding? Nah. You think it's not? But you you like know who congressmen are. Like you're really political. Like, There's, but the average person doesn't even know what's going on politically. That's wild, bro. I thought you were saying for like a month, cinnamon. When you were saying cinema, <laughs> and I googled cinnamon, and I was like, who the <laughs> fuck is this congressman <laughs> cinnamon? <laughs> I didn't even know it was spelled that starting might also S. Be S. Too, that might be. So I just think like it like without him there, everybody's been able to detach politically. Right? I do I like, think there it, it it did feel a lot like the the difference between having a bad leader and having no leader. Mm. What would you rather have? Bad parents or no it parents? It feels like we have no leader now. That's my point. It feels like with Trump, we had a terrible leader, and now we have no leader, and it's almost like... What do you say? I mean, what did you say? No show's better than a bad show? What I do don't know what they said. I don't know. Yeah, you wouldn't agree. Y'all wouldn't agree with that because y'all say y'all like bombing. Do I want bad parents? Or, we never said we liked it. No, we never <laughs> we said, said we liked it. We said it's necessary. Yeah, it's, it's necessary, necessary but necessary. nobody likes that nobody shit. Nobody likes it. You we, want no show or a bad show? No leadership or bad leadership? Sometimes you got to go through bad leadership and bad shows to get to a good place. Well, well America's dead now, because boy, I think I, I personally think this is my personal opinion. The news, the media, when Trump was in office, it was nuts. Like everything it was, was nuts. Everything was nuts. A lot of niggas made some way, money too. But here's yeah. the thing: they made things World War Three that shouldn't have been World War Three. Ah, uh, because it was so polarized. Now it's yeah. actually some shit. That should be World War Three, like literally. And we don't <laughs> give a fuck. And we don't care. Yeah. Inflation yeah. is through the roof. Yeah. Gas prices are sky motherfucking high. You know, uh, you see the, the, the mass shootings, abortion rights are being threatened, voting yeah. rights that might not be around. Like, yeah. We, now's the time to really be ringing the alarm, but they're not, which is so strange to me. Yeah. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> Who are you going to call? There's nobody, there's nobody that's like, there's no, 
what feels like an adult in charge. There's no, yeah. there's no hand on your shoulder that's like, everything's going to be all right. We're under control. You can trust us. Yeah, but, yeah, and yeah. we haven't had that, I don't think, since Obama. And whether you liked Obama or not, he did give you that sense of security. Yeah. Of Media bodies in charge that cares. Yeah. Media was different, though. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that... Media was different. I'm, I'm sure the media attacked him like crazy, too. Like, mm, I mean, for the sure. right-wing media no, was attacking I'm Obama. not even talking about that. I'm talking about our media into Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We there didn't take in as media, much. By the way, yeah. Barack Obama doesn't even win the presidency if social media is the way it is now. Who do you think? He, they would have... He didn't believe in so. gay marriage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but back then, nobody did. Do you exist within, like, the normalcy okay. of the time? Yeah. Like, but by also his too, you gotta, did? You got to think, there's a lot of black people that don't want gay marriage. Yeah, but and, and a lot, there's a election, lot... You can't win an election with sure all you can with them. People. Sure, you, you gotta can, get those, but you, you can win a lot of red states. If he was going to win the blue states, no matter what, yeah, you know, he would he would have turned a lot of red true. states blue or purple but, in that in that instance because you know culturally, you know, we don't all think the same. Yeah, but the red states couldn't get past the black thing in a lot of cases. Yeah, but it might have. It might have if he said he didn't like gay marriage. Yeah, they're like, this <laughs> guy's on to something. <laughs> this guy right now. here. I want a regular burger, burger. Yeah. You don't want a yeah. two bun shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the fuck would happen. Doesn't that fucking commercial sound like what a guy would say if he was explaining why gay sex is wrong to his kid? <laughs> what? Like, we ever eaten two buns of the burger? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> is that real? Is that a is that a real thing Burger King's doing? That's a real ad, Al. That's it looks wild. like a real this, All right, this is what Biden has has shown me is that like <laughs> that <was so laughs> yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. Is oh, man. The, the visual of the father trying to explain it to the kids. It's hilarious. Like, this right? is what gay sex is like. It's yeah, like yeah. having see two? that hamburger. What if it just had two of the bottom parts? Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be strange? Wouldn't God hate that? And Would just God meet, eat that? And just hamburger? meat in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be disgusting. But if you have one top bun and one bottom bun, everything fits perfectly, doesn't it? Right? Like, that's how... That's the whole point of the top. That's how I'm going to explain sex to my kid, bro. <laughs> With buns. Like, hey, these buns is identify however you want them to identify. Oh, man. It's not even a Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> this is a chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, Biden showed me... <laughs> He's not touching. <laughs> I am not reading about this shit tomorrow. <laughs> you forget about it. Michael Che mostly stayed mum. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ray J. Shout out Ray J, bro. What you were saying? Now that Biden showed me that we don't really, like, the ship keeps moving. That's what, like, I thought we really need a president. And, like, I really did think it. Like, I, th- I and now I'm realizing that I just don't know who's in charge. That's, isn't that comforting? No. Even no. if nobody's in charge, <laughs> the shit still keeps moving. It's not really moving. To me, so that's the most comforting. Because now it don't matter who's president, everything is going to keep going the way it always is. People are going to be upset not, at the same. No. We're still upset at abortion. We're still upset at gun rights. We're still upset at uh, cops fucking killing everybody. Or we still upset at all these fucking things. All of that is easier when the economy stays. <laughs> say again? All of that's a little easier when the economy stays. Say that, stays. bro. Yeah, all say, of that's a little easier when the economy If the economy was good, everybody would be fine with Biden. Because it's making crime go up. You know what I mean? Like, we're having to deal with things that we shouldn't have to deal with. Mm-hmm. Like I, I read a story today where it was a, a guy robbed six people in Milwaukee, killed all six of the people, yeah. and then put on the person's shades in the house and took a fucking selfie. That's wild. All for some cash, guns, drugs, and sunglasses. You saw that 12-year-old white kid rob the uh, the the gas station? Really? And the, the woman didn't even think it was real and looks at him and goes, are you being serious? Oh, I did see that video. And he just lets off a shot. Yeah. He watched too many movies. Yeah, he That's really That's what you did. do when you set him up fucking yeah. off sick and <laughs> yeah. shooting the air. Yeah, it's wild, man. That's what I'm saying. So when the economy is stable and, you know, people got some money in their pockets. I don't know. It's different. You think that's you think it's an economic thing? Yeah, I think people are more apt to be OK when the economy is good. And when the economy is bad, they start looking at all the you just put it on your own stresses in your life. You, you've you been through times where you probably didn't have that much money. Everything's stressful. Yeah, but I don't think there's ever been a time where people didn't have money. I think like. Well, there are people without money. Yeah, Definitely. but I'm I'm saying I, I think like you've been rich a long time to make a comment like that, Michael Shea. 
No, it's true. I mean, I, I don't I don't ever remember a time where I was like, oh, the economy's amazing. Everybody's doing great. Even when it when statistically it seemed that way from where I'm from, it it never felt like oh, everybody's doing great now. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I, I think all of that feels relative, but it's the same pockets. I just think the crimes are getting more and more bizarre. They don't it's not even like shit that I could comprehend. It's not, oh, guy robs liquor store. It's like motherfucker shoots up Walmart, doesn't take a dime. You're like, what? Why? Yeah. What? What? And then another one and then another one and then another one. I it don't think, it don't even seem like a a money thing. I think that's that shows you how bad it is, though, because people are acting out of frustration. So they're literally just projecting pain. So it's like if I want to I'm hurting. So fuck that. I want to hurt you, too. That's what it feels like. I think people are consuming too much information and and they're going insane. I I second that too. Yeah, I think people are literally driving themselves insane with how much content they're consuming. I agree with that because of social media. I know I agree with that. Like and, and, and you don't know what you're taking in. And wait, yeah. and, and then like what is the process there? Like, why does that drive you insane? I I think I think there was a time where you'd read a newspaper. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that was that was how you got your news. Or and then you, you took a walk. And, and you yeah, took a walk, yeah, you yeah. went to work or whatever. Did you hear about the thing in the newspaper? That was it. And then maybe you go home and you watch the news. And like, wow, that's that's crazy. When <laughs> all you're feeding yourself is just yeah. insanity, yeah. you start to see crimes repeated, repeated. Yeah. And you're like, wait a minute. They just talked about a motherfucker who did this. you telling me the guy that just did it the second time didn't see what that guy did? And I think it's a lot of copycat shit. It's a lot I agree of with that. I think people are finding connection to, yeah. in other in other bouts of insanity. Yeah. And they starting to feel like we in the insane crew. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like and they, they feel connected and they starting to repeat this shit over and over again because of all they're doing is consuming information about it. You think it's yeah. also two people are, are desensitized desensitized to violence? Because it of when, course. I, when, I, when I read that story in Milwaukee, I'm like, yo, you know how wild, and he's only 34, by the way. Yeah. You know how wild you got to be to kill six people, leave them in the house for three days, steal their shit and try their shit on and take selfies with it? Like, police yeah. are, like, that's, that's wild. Bro. That steps the game up. <laughs> what do you mean, Michael Che? <laughs> I, I, you step the, ga- <laughs> you step the game up. Now you're, now you're the craziest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, trying yeah, to one-up one. <laughs> now you're, now you're yeah. the crazy guy. Yeah. See, that's why comedians, they, I hate when they take the beat. Because <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you just leave it at that steps the game up. Yeah. You chuckle. <laughs> you know? You can't help but chuckle. Yeah. That's what it is. I I, I truly think that people are starting to outdo themselves. And in in the, it's, it's kind of sad to watch, and I wish the coverage wasn't as insane. It's got to be something. But the anyway. coverage comes from this. It's not even... News outlets reporting this shit most yeah, of the time. It's, it's the people. guy, it's convenience store cameras, and this guy taking the selfie, and you got to tie the two together. If this guy takes a selfie, post it on social media, yeah. you got to tie the two stories together. You think if that guy didn't have Wi-Fi, he would have committed that crime? He'd have still did it. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he was starving. He wanted to, <laughs> he, he did it, he, he, it was a robbery. So he wanted something. They, they, they had more than him, he wanted some of it. He probably wouldn't have took a selfie, though. Probably wouldn't have took a selfie. Yeah. It's a strange world we live in. Yeah. And to even make sense of this shit, even to try to make sense of this shit will drive you crazy. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's pay, let's do some ads. I don't know why I got so sad talking about mass shootings. <laughs> this guy. Let me come <laughs> get, get this. <laughs> See? You brought it up and it was like, wow, that's got weird. I'm like, yeah, man. <laughs> I thought everybody was taking a beat to think. <laughs> right? Let's do some talk space and we come back and do some asking idiots. All right, guys, we gonna take a break for a second because I got to tell you guys about talk space, okay? Therapy is absolutely phenomenal. It is so important to being uh, a good person, not only to yourself, but to your loved ones, to your friends, the people you work with. Uh, uh, you have to learn about who you are and like why your behavior is you know, dictated by these complex emotions that got a lot to do with your childhood or other shit that's going on in your life. And if you just want to be a better version of yourself to the people around you, you get way more out of work. You get way more of relationships, everything. Talkspace can help you do that. Okay. Um, you know, Charlamagne can speak on this, I'm sure forever, but he's a huge uh, supporter uh, of, of therapy. Therapy is absolutely amazing. And uh, this is the way that people do therapy now. Like when I do therapy, I go on a Zoom with my therapist. It used to be weird to do it over the phone or in a Zoom call, but now since the pandemic, that's just how it's done. 
And um, yeah, maybe it's even more. Sorry, go. No, I, was, I don't think my wife's ever been in a therapist's office. There you go. All, all her therapy is over. And it might even be more comfortable for you. So Talkspace, they have the ability for you to do all this. Go check out your first therapy session. They have everything that you need, licensed professionals that you can deal with whenever you want. They have also have 24-7 text, audio, and video messaging. Uh, Talkspace lets you talk to a licensed therapist without needing an appointment. Talkspace is private, secure, and important. most importantly, accessible. It's everything you love about therapy without the stuff that gets in the way, Okay. If you thought uh, if thoughts and emotions are piling up, a fresh perspective can help you feel better. Match your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com and use the promo code IDIOTS during the sign up to get $100 off your first month. That's $100 off at Talkspace.com, promo code IDIOTS. Now, this episode is also brought to you by Molson Coors, baby. Do you ever feel like you're always on? You got work, friends, family, a million pressing social issues and an ex, uh, expectation to be on 24-7. Sometimes you just need a moment to turn off and hit reset, and that's when you reach for a Coors Light. It's made to chill, guys. I'm telling you, absolutely delicious, cool, crisp, refreshing. It's summer. You know the best way to cool down and chill the hell out. Take a moment. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way, you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit the reset button, just open up a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. Coors Light is a cold lagered, cold filtered, and cold packaged beer. It's literally made to chill. It's as crisp and refreshing as the Colorado Rockies themselves. Perfect for a moment to unwind. When I need to take a second for myself, I reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash idiots. That's C-O-O-R-S Light, L-I-G-H-T dot com slash idiots. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Now let's get back to the show. All right, so let's do some asking idiots. All right, let's get, let's do some asking idiots. I thought he was Amber Heard? She pooped. Yeah, how many people do you think is going to shit on beds now that they found out about Amber Heard? <laughs> you don't think that's ever going to happen again? Oh, 100%. You don't think that she has said it anything was the dog, to do with though. it? Yeah. You know why I don't I don't care about the Amber Heard case? Why? Because I was watching CNN on the day that the Tulsa uh, hospital shooting happened. Yeah. And you're watching the Tulsa shooting happen, right? So there's yeah. all of these. This, you already had Buffalo. We had mm -hmm. Texas. Yeah. We had all that, and I'm watching. I'm like, damn, another one in a fucking hospital. Yada. And then all of a sudden you see breaking news. And you're like, well, what the fuck is about to happen? Like this is breaking news <laughs> <laughs> during the Tulsa shooting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is about to happen? And it's the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Who cares? Like the breaking, the do breaking news on CNN. Then I turn to Fox. And Fox had the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing going on. She yeah. lost 15 million. That's kind of funny. Yeah. It's hilarious. She will try to get 100 million and, <laughs> and lost 15. 15. And now she don't have it. Ooh. Johnny Depp not going to see that money. But nah, I guess it's it was the, his money anyway. He gave her he gave her 8. Yeah. And she's got 8, I think. I guess it's the first one. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so 8 million 47 dollars. That's Let, it. Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor before we lose everybody. Oh, two live crew lost their freedom of speech case. How would hip hop sound today? That's from Jeffrey Knows with a Z at the end. I like, let's do the Michael Che question for us. Let's, oh, yeah, go ahead. Where does Michael Che, Travi 2X is, where does Michael Che rank his SNL group versus the past groups? Ooh. Oh, that's a really good question. Again, I think every cast is appreciated retroactively. So I'm going to say very high. And I know that people will be like, oh, get the fuck out of here. But I think once you start to see everybody's career mm -hmm. after this, you'll start to realize how many fucking stars we actually had in this current group. Mm. Now, granted, we've had 20 cast members in this group. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more, you know, opportunity to get yeah. some greats out there. But I think what Cecily can do, what Kate could do with AD and Keenan and and Chris and, and Pete and even Leslie, who was, you know, just there a couple years ago, 
I think people will appreciate it a lot more. In five years, people will be like, damn, we had a lot of we had a lot of women. No, that's real. And then you, you, even you, even you look Chris. at Heidi, you look at Ego, I mean so many, so much talent. It's also tough to compare to back in the day because there were so much fewer famous people back in the day. Yeah, and you also you like, comparing yeah. it to their to their movie careers too. Yeah. Like people be you know, if you say Tina Fey, you think Dirty Rock and yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You think of so much other shit. Yeah. So I think once, you know, we've had a chance to have our careers outside of the show, people will appreciate how much talent that was actually there. Damn, shows. I guess telling them to quit might be the right thing then. I'm telling them, bro. Saying cheesy says is SNL considered a white show. I think it's considered a national show and in a white nation. Well handled. Excellent answer. It reflects the country. <laughs> that is a phenomenal answer. That's that's what it is. Let's, 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 let's get a couple more, Taylor, we get up out of here. Jeffrey knows if two, I see that's not a two minute answer. If the two live crew lost their freedom of speech case, how would hip hop sound today? That, uh, that's when we talk about people who don't get their just due, Uncle Luke and two live crew is for one of them. Sure. Because for there, sure. there's no parental advisory stickers on albums if it's not for Uncle Luke. That shit should really be a movie. Mm. Word. Like it literally should be a movie. It really, it changed the course of hip hop. I don't know what hip hop would be. I guess more people would be in jail because they used to lock you up. You perform certain songs, certain Word. places, they arrest your ass. You know what I mean? Certain things wouldn't get played on the radio. It would have. That's know what, not just hip hop. That's going to be all music. All yeah, music. Yeah, yes, he changed is, music. Rock music, yes. everything. Like, that set a precedent for all of it. The so mu music is completely different. Music owes a tremendous debt. debt of gratitude to 100%. Uncle Luke. 100%. Like, right. um, what the fuck? I'm gonna, let's end on this one. Thanks to first said, is the phrase happy wife, happy life a sign of toxic Yo, femininity? Yes, and there is nothing funnier than toxic femininity. Bro, what was that shit we were looking up the other day? Toxic. Uh, it. So, like, there's these things, like, uh, there's this trend of, like, the things that men can do, like, one little thing that makes women not want to fuck them at all, like, ever again. And there was this, like, Twitter trend. Mm. And these girls were absolutely fucking hilarious, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, like he's a, if you're eating like pasta with red sauce and that shit ends up on a corner of your mouth, like, no. Like, they just kept going through one after another of like little tiny things men can do. What was the other shit? Like, if you got a blow in your soup before you eat it. Like, <laughs> you blowing your so, soup? So it's well, just like damn. raw toxic femininity and it was the funniest fucking thing. Do you have that list? What was it? The ick? I remember, but I remember um, if you bend down and pick something up weird. <laughs> like this. Oh, yeah, if you bend at the waist to yeah. pick something up or something like that. <laughs> you bend like, at the waist? Bro, it was like, it was, it, was, it was like, it was women judging men like men judge men. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it was just fucking amazing. This is what happens when you can't say gay slurs anymore. <laughs> what do you say? One gay the slur would have killed that whole thread. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they really want to say to us. That's the truth. What, they really got yeah, one yeah, word they want to call say it. Say what you really feel, say what women. You really feel. Yeah, yeah, man. Happy Pride Month. Say it. <laughs> call me a gay Jay. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. A sign of toxic femininity, Michael Shea? I don't even know what it means. Happy wife, happy... Oh, I guess that's saying that uh, putting your wife's feelings first. Man, so I, I'm right. not married. They're right. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. It should be a compromise, but they're really yeah. right. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to be so sad when I'm 55, 60 years old, bro. When what? <laughs> Just because I'm the only guy in the house. Yeah. That's a lot, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, yeah. I don't think y'all understand how, what, what I go through, man. What, what do you And go then, through? like, this weekend... My, my my daughter had like two of her friends over and my wife just looks at me and goes, you know, this is just the beginning of, uh, you know, your house being overrun by women. And I'm like, it's been over. It's been overrun by Wait women. Wait till they start cycling, bro. And so, and so, and so. Is y'all flipping the bazaar yet? They have a stroke. I'm working. I said, I'm And so my wife is like, so imagine when, because it's two of my oldest daughter's friends over, and my wife is like, so imagine when you're, you, you know, you're, our second has friends over and your third has friends over. And I'm like, holy shit, I got to get a dog. 
Why? Just so you can have some male energy? Gotta see a dick, bro. Whoa. That's what I'm talking about, bro. <laughs> Let them know, bro. Let them know, bro. Come on. Come on, Shay. Come, come on, on Shay. It's Pride Month. I'm Yo, single. Come I'm on, single. bro. Know, Stop being I, such a I top, dog. You're yet. such a top. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you need to see a dick every once in a while, dog. I feel you, dude. It is what it is, bro. Just want to be with the homies. Oh. Seeing their dicks and shit. Hey, yo. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. Michael Che, thank you for coming. Yo, brother. thank you for having me. me. Make this sure shit. you watch his show on HBO Max. Phenomenal show. I'm not just saying that because, you know, we're in an episode. It's a really, really good show. And it's, the type of comedy I like because it talks about things that are going on, so, social issues. Amen. In a really smart way. And check out the specials too. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you so much. For sure, for it's sure. It's the brilliant of this podcast. Peace.